Today I'm going to introduce to you the top five most popular, most well-known neighborhoods in Seattle that if you're considering moving here, you should absolutely know about. Hi, my name is Monica Church. I'm a real estate agent here in Seattle. I personally live in one of these neighborhoods and I help people buy and sell around these top five neighborhoods all the time. If you're looking to buy or sell your home, you can email me at the email in the description below. But first, let's get into this video. Number one, with an average home price of a $735,000 we have Fremont. As you can see from the mural behind me, Fremont's a little funkier, a little more fun and playful than the other neighborhood, but it's not that weird. There's just a couple weird things. This is the Fremont Canal. It's really not particularly beautiful. It's an okay spot to walk, but I wanted to show you this point of interest, which is a landscaped dinosaur. You know you're in Fremont when you see this blue and orange bridge. This is the Fremont Bridge and it's actually one of the most active draw bridges in America. <music> Fremont is also home to some of Seattle's tech scene. You'll have Adobe, Google, and Tableau offices. One of my favorite spots in Fremont is this public dock. You really wouldn't even know it. Usually you see a dock and you're like, I'm not allowed on that, but this is public. The only rule is if you see rowers coming on, you have to yield to them. I guess rowers take their rowing very seriously. On North 36th Street, you'll see behind me, there are lots of restaurants and bars and they're all converted old structures. So used to be homes, things like that. And it just, it gives Fremont more character. So if you're a biker, you will love Fremont. There are really great dedicated bike lanes and the Burt Gilman Trail goes all throughout here. The Fremont Bridge keeps account of how many people bike. And today there was about 1700. walk down a typical Fremont Street is gonna look like this. Not as many single family homes. There used to be a lot, but most of them have been torn down and turned into townhomes just because of the desirability of living here. They made it more dense. Here's a quick look inside of a new construction townhouse in Fremont. This one's listed right under a million dollars. It's a three bed, three bath. I love how this one makes you feel like you're in a tree house and it's literally just steps away from everything I just showed you. Fremont's like the neighborhood if Seattle were trying to be Portland. It doesn't try and be perfect. It embraces its quirks. And to top it all off, it's bordering Lake Union. So you feel very connected to the water and you can go to Gasworks Park every day. Next we have Ballard. There's two parts to Ballard and they're pretty black and white in my opinion. You've got the southern part of Ballard where you're gonna have Market Street and Ballard Avenue. These are all the great shops and restaurants that people love to flock to. And then right above it, you're gonna have about 10 blocks that are just filled with townhomes. So many townhomes that have been constructed. So typical Ballard Street here, lots of townhomes. Here's a quick look inside a new construction townhouse in Ballard. This one was listed right around 1.1. It had a really nice light filled living space and was walkable to everything I just mentioned. So popular, especially among younger people just getting into the market. Ballard's just a really fun place to live. And then Northern Ballard, right above 70th Street, this turns into Whittier Heights. And this is a ton of single family homes. These streets are beautiful. You're gonna find a lot of tutors, a little more family oriented feeling. These single family homes will be above a million dollars, but for something more affordable, I've been seeing a ton of these cottages come up. They're new construction under 1,000 square feet. They usually come with a dedicated yard space. They're a very efficient layout. On the first floor, you'll have your kitchen and living space, and then upstairs, two bedrooms with their own ensuite bathrooms. This is a really good condo alternative, and you'll find these starting around $650,000. Number three is Green Lake with a median price of $933,000. Green Lake is such a popular neighborhood because of the lake. People love the lake all over Seattle. It's just one of the best amenities and to live right around it, it feels like a dream come true for many people. My favorite part of Green Lake is this beautiful tree-lined street. 
It's so gorgeous. This is the prettiest place you could be in Seattle in the fall. When you look at Green Lake on a map, you'll see Highway 99 is right up to the west. And with that, it's a little bit of a less desirable side right there because it's a freeway that's loud. It has random people walking about. If you know anything about Aurora Avenue, then you know, and I'll leave it at that. Generally speaking, like living near Aurora Avenue, you, you want to be about two blocks away. The heart of Green Lake is going to be on the east side. You have a PCC, different restaurants, coffee shops, there's the bathhouse. Obviously it rains a lot. So for year round swimming, there's actually an indoor pool. There's a lot to do at Green Lake. Of course you can walk or run around the lake. You could also row crew. You can get on a canoe. They have diving boards out in the summer. There are pickleball courts. It is a Wednesday morning and every pickleball court is full. Green Lake is mainly compromised of single family homes and townhomes. There is one really great condo building. It's called Florera. It's right in the heart of the retail district of Green Lake and condos in this building typically go within a few days. Right now I'm in a two bedroom, two bathroom townhouse listed at $750,000. This was built in 2019 and it's really nice. It opens up to a living space and a galley kitchen. In the back, you also have a yard space that was really well landscaped. Going upstairs, you're gonna have the first bedroom with a generous walk-in closet and bathroom. Up the third flight of stairs, you're gonna have the primary suite with a long hallway of built-in closets and a generous sized bathroom again with a double sink vanity. And then at the very top, you also have a rooftop deck. This home is in the perfect location. It's right behind the PCC, just a couple blocks from Green Lake. Green Lake is the ultimate outdoor activity neighborhood. Number four, we have Queen Anne with an average median price of $945,000. You guys probably already know Queen Anne if you watch my channel because that is where I live. The difference between Queen Anne and Fremont and Ballard is Fremont and Ballard, it really does feel very taken over by townhomes. You don't see as many single family homes. It, it, they're still great neighborhoods, but they don't feel as quaint. They feel like they had some of their character stripped away. Queen Anne, what's interesting is there are a lot of townhomes. I live in a townhome in Queen Anne but most of them are actually built behind single-family homes so when you're walking down the streets of Queen Anne it still feels like a quaint cute neighborhood but you've got the single-family homes in the front and then a lot of the townhomes in the back so you can find a starter single-family home in Queen Anne for about 1.1 million dollars up to 8 million dollars and that's because Queen Anne is on the hill you've got the really great views of the Puget Sound in the city you've got some of the nicest real estate the heart of Queen Anne is Queen Anne Avenue with a Trader Joe's is so convenient. Wow, I'm showing you guys a lot of new construction, but I guess that's what I've been helping my buyers with the most recently. This was listed in the winter for $770,000. It was a 1,000 square foot, two bed, two bath, and it was really cute. It went very, very quick. And the fifth most popular neighborhood is Wallingford. This is right above Fremont, and I like to think of it kind of as Fremont's older brother. Fremont feels just a little younger. It feels like a younger crowd. It's a little more dense. Wallingford does still have a little bit more of the single family homes. They tend to be a little bit bigger. A typical walk through Wallingford is gonna be a lot quieter, more quaint. In many single family homes, you're gonna find a lot of craftsmen and bungalows. Got some cute little Vespas right here. The heart of Wallingford is gonna be 45th Street. Right behind me is a condo building called Wallingford 45. It gets its name because it's in the heart of Wallingford on 45th Street, which has a lot of retail and restaurants. This condo building is unique because it actually allows Airbnb, whereas most don't. So if you're someone that wants to live in Seattle part-time, you can get a one-bedroom condo here around four to $500,000. And there's a Grand Central Bakery at the bottom. This is my favorite place to get bread in Seattle. So if you're looking to be in a core neighborhood with walkability and fun things to do, you can't go wrong with any of these five. I grouped them together because they're also right next to each other. It takes about 10 minutes to go from neighborhood to neighborhood. So if you live in Green Lake, you can still easily get to Queen Anne or Ballard. If you live in Fremont, you can stroll right over to Wallingford. These neighborhoods work really well together. There's so many great neighborhoods here in Seattle, but these five are a really great place to start if you're just visiting Seattle, if you're looking to live here, to buy here. Now you can click anywhere on the screen to explore more of my Seattle content and don't forget to subscribe.